So welcome to my episode on 10 game series that you need to play before you die, before you leave this world, if you haven't already. And I think these are really important games. I think they're a really important series. I've gone through them systematically and went, yes, this needs to be there, that needs to be there. I'll ask you guys, what are some video game series that you need to play before you leave this crazy, crazy world? Let me know down below. And that's my disclaimer. This is just my list. There's no official list. My list is not officially right by any means. They're just my personal opinions. And I played all of these series throughout the years. I see nothing but good things for you, my boy. Okay, the first one became a series. There's so many games based off the original, but for me, I love the original when it came out on the NES, and I play it nearly every single day. I think it is one of the greatest video games ever made. And that game is Tetris. The addiction is real with this. Here it is, here's my analog pocket, and here I have the original Game Boy Advance game in here, and I play this at least 40 minutes every single day just to beat my own score, not for any other reason, because the game is so addictive, and it's so brilliant, and so addicting, and it's an interesting one because it came out a long time ago, and people loved it and set world records. People are still doing that to this day, and there's a whole new generation that is playing the original Tetris, especially the NES Tetris. That's where they're playing it at. And there's been so many versions of Tetris over the years, but it all comes back to the original. And the original is something special. And I think it's one of the greatest video games that mankind has ever made. It's really that brilliant. It really pushes you if, as a player to do the best that you can do and to think ahead of all the pieces that are coming down to get the ultimate Tetris. Okay, the next series is not a hard one for me to pick and I think most people would agree with this and that is the Mario series in general. All the way from the old days, from the 8-bit era, up to now with all the 3D games and look at look how Mario has changed over the years. And here's the thing, I like all of the games. I played them all, I finished every single Mario game in the mainline series. And I adore them, I adore them for different reasons. I love the original Super Mario Bros. 3, that's a 10 out of 10 game. Never mind going to Mario 64 when we made that massive leap. That was crazy, going from 2D to 3D. And with Mario Odyssey, we got to build on that even further. And also into Bowser's Fury, it showed us the future of Mario games and where they can go from here. And these are great action platformers, so much fun, so much charm, and at times a lot of different challenges and secrets. There's always so many secrets in these games to uncover. Okay, so we go from the lighthearted Mario into the evil, twisted world of Resident Evil. I'm even wearing my Resident Evil hoodie right now because I adore this series. It's survival horror. It's something that we've never seen before and it was awesome. At first it was zombies and then we've gone into some other directions. The storyline has gone crazy out of hand, but I love the original first few games and I love Resident Evil 2 and 4. I love 3 as well. And I even love all the new ones that have come out. All of them have a different flavor that adds to the mythos of this entire series. And it's always about, you know, conserving your ammo, going around that dark corner. Is there something there? Is there nothing there? And then solving the puzzles, going back and forth, and hopefully not running into anything too scary. Nighty night. Nights. But I really think everybody should play Resident Evil, even if you're not a fan of horror games, just for the tension, the atmosphere, and the look of the games themselves. I think you'll find something really entertaining here. I'll let myself out. Okay, we're going back to Nintendo again, and a certain series that got born many, many years ago on the NES, The Legend of Zelda, the Zelda series. This is a staple that I really believe everybody should play. 
This is a great action platforming game with RPG mechanics in there, and it's changed over time. In the beginning, you just had to do different dungeons, and then all of a sudden, with Breath of the Wild, they opened it up to a whole brand new world where you could run anywhere and do anything practically you wanted to do, and I've loved all of the games in this series. All of them have their strengths. Some of them have their weaknesses as well. I'm not a huge fan of Skyward Sword, but you know, Wind Waker really did it for me. And then obviously going into the Breath of the Wild series and Tears of the Kingdom, both of those are 10 out of 10 games for me, easily. But yet, I love the original NES game where it all started from. It's kind of one of the first overhead sandbox games that you're like, hey, where do I go? What do I do? I remember being confused when I originally played the first game. I'm like, where do I go? What do I do? I didn't understand the concept of the game because it was so radically different. And then you got it, you get your sword, you get out there, and you're like, this is amazing. I love the adventure of it. I love the exploration. I love discovering puzzles and solving them and go exploring the world and finding different weapons and items and fighting huge bosses. The Legend of Zelda series in general, you cannot beat. I mean, it's such a perfect series. Yes, it has its ups and downs with certain games, but overall, what a series and one that everybody has to play. The next series is such an easy one for me because I'm gonna pick a fighting series, and that's Street Fighter. There can only be one in my mind, Street Fighter. Yes, there's so many other series that are so good for fighting games, like Tekken and such. But, for me, it's Street Fighter. It always comes back to the original. That really carved the way to future games. And I remember playing the original Street Fighter, and that was okay. But when I played Street Fighter 2, my mind was blown. I couldn't believe that I could stand next to somebody and play this kind of like anime fighting game and you know with the characters that had all the unique moves and special abilities and I could beat other players or they could beat me. I was so blown away I'm like I cannot believe this and then different players were coming to the arcades with different abilities and it really felt like a tournament right so you could practice it was almost like the old karate kid where the more you practice the better at the game you got that's Street Fighter that's Street Fighter and the more you play the game, the better at it you get. And the more you play against seasoned veterans, the better at it you get. And it, yeah, you'll lose a lot. That's all part of the game. I lost a lot in my old Street Fighter 2 days. But then I start to learn the game, and the game is brilliant. And there's been so many Street Fighters over the years. And I'm predominantly showing Street Fighter 6 right now, because that's the latest game that's out at this point. And I gotta say, I love that game. I love how far we've come with the series, how much it's matured. When you look at the original games to now, it's like night and day. Incredible stuff. And you know what? What a fighting game series. I mean, I've had so much fun and i played thousands of hours playing this game. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, I really thought about this one and I'm like, you know, this is such a big game series from where we started from to where we're at now. And that is the God of War series. My God, no pun intended. This game blows me away every single time I play it. The graphic fidelity of the new ones is second to none. The world building, the characters, the emotion. I mean, they've done so much with this series and they've really taken it into the future. And yes, it's an action platforming game, the likes of which is on steroids every single time you play it. And I can't believe all the moves you can do, all the places you can explore. This game is massive in scope and it's very fulfilling and let me say, very challenging. But that's part of the charm when you finally get to the end of it. You feel that you really climbed a mountain and accomplished something. First, you need to cut off my head. Wait, what? Where it started from to where it's at now, it had to be in the list. What do you guys think of God of War? Let me know down below. <laughs> now, the next game series is an interesting one because I liked one of the earlier ones on PS2, and I played all of the games to certain extents but I know its place in history, and I know that everybody should play this game to see how far they can push an open world city and beyond that with 
Grand Theft Auto. And I'm gonna play the, you know, the sixth trailer here. Wow, like look at this stuff. I mean, what other game does this? It's a living, breathing world where you can run around the city and get into mayhem and do anything you wanna do. There's even online play mechanics for that. But look at what they built with this game and this series. Well, look who's back. The cities themselves come alive and become their own thing. And when you're exploring them, you cannot believe the size and the scope and the amount of work that went into the series. They're such high AAA games that I always pick them up and I never play it the way you're supposed to play it. And I think that's how you're supposed to do it. I just get driving around and crazy things start happening to me and just meet the weirdest characters and you know build up my star rating. That's what I do. That's what I do in these games. And I love them. I really do appreciate what these games have done for video games in general with the open world concept. Trust. Trust. Okay, some people may disagree with me on this one and that's totally okay. But I have to explain from my point of view, I'd never played a first person shooter. Yes, I know. I played a little bit of GoldenEye back in the day, but even that, not so much. It wasn't until I bored my friend's Xbox back in the day, Four Nights of the Old Republic, and he happened to have this copy of Halo in there. And I started to play it, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe Halo 1. It blew me away, no pun intended, because I'd never seen physics like that in any game, where characters would blow up, you throw a grenade, characters would go flying through the air. I was like mesmerized of what this game could do. I was like, I've never played anything like it, and it made me a fan of first person shooters. And yes, for me, it's the early games, and yes, Halo Infinite to a certain extent as well, I finished that game, and all of the other games in there, but it was the first couple that really did it for me. I'll show a lot of Halo Infinite footage here because just to see how far they've come with the series, and it's just a comfort zone series for me. It's one of those ones that I went in going, what is this? I don't know if this is for me, and falling in love with how they revolutionized gaming, and they did at that time. Now, there's so many first-person shooters that all do the same stuff. I mean, it's not as revolutionary anymore, but for me back then, seeing it going, whoa. So yeah, if you've never played a first-person shooter, start with the original Halo. It's a great place to start, and it's a really fun place to start, and it's got such a great storyline. I think we're just getting started. And yes, in this list, I have to put in Final Fantasy, the series, all of the games, all of the games. I played it originally on the NES when it first came out, fell in love, and then I started playing all of them onto the Super Nintendo, onto the PS1, onto the PS2, and then beyond, right up to now with Final Fantasy 16. Don't give up now. I've played all of these games. There's so many wonderful games in the series. I could name a few of them if you're just like, hey, what, what game should I play? Play the first game on NES to see where it started from, and then play two and three, which were four and six in Japan. Love those games. Love seven, I love eight, I love nine, and I love 10. And you know what? I love 11, it's an online game only, and love 12 especially. That's a game that I think is underappreciated. Me and my wife finished it a few years ago, and we're like, you know what, that was pretty cool. 13, not so much for me, but as we keep going on, 15 had some merit to it. 16 was a little bit serious, needed a little bit more levity, a little bit more humor going on there. But overall, it's a solid RPG that is there for sure. Forevermore! You know what? You can't go wrong with any of the games in the Final Fantasy series if you just want to jump right in. Okay, I gotta end with this one right here. And that is The Last of Us. Yes, I know, part two is very divisive for a lot of people. I personally found a lot of merit in the game. I understand why a lot of people don't like it as well, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm talking about the first game. And I think that's something we can all agree on with a handshake because it's unbelievable. And it had to be in there. It had to be on this list because it's earned it. I reckon it's got something to do with that girl. And yes, by the time you watch this video, there's probably been another 15 remasters of the first game, and that's okay if you've never played it, to pick up the latest remaster of it. 
But what the first game does so well is establish a relationship between Joel and Ellie. And it's that emotional bond between the characters that you resonate towards. What, you know, going around this post-apocalyptic world, gone mad, with these crazy clickers running around trying to kill everybody. It is a sight to behold just to be in this world setting and to see the other characters that are around the world. It's a very bleak world setting and I guess it's the heart of Joel and Ellie that really keeps it together and that's what I think everybody can agree on. I hope you know how to use that thing. And just the exploration and working together to get through the game and to get past different obstacles, that's what the game is all about and the great shooting mechanics of it and the excitement of it and the absolute terrifyingness of it, you know, trying to run away from certain things and all of that. The game is a 10 out of 10. I'd even say a 12 out of 10. I think they got it so right and so perfect that I think everybody has to play the original The Last of Us. So yeah, I had to talk about all of these game series today because they really mean something to me personally and they're huge recommendations for all of you out there who have not played them yet. If you haven't played them yet, please give them a go, give them a try. I think that you'll find some merit to some of these games. For sure, you might get a little something out of them. Oh, is that everything you hope for? Let me know down below that it, what are some game series that you think everybody should play. Let me know because I want to see what you're picking, what you're choosing, because I'm definitely going to go in and read the comments. So anyways, guys, until next time.